Adam here from the Walzer Automotive Group, and what I want to do today is compare a couple of Honda SUVs. Now, on the one side, I have the Honda Pilot, and on the other side, I have the Honda Passport. If you're trying to decide between the two, we'll break down some of the stuff on the outside, the inside, and see which one might just be right for you. Let's start by looking at the Honda Passport. Now, this is the EXL trim, so there's a lot of different trim levels, but for the sake of the comparison, we want to use the same trim level, so the Pilot is the EXL as well. Now, the Passport will be standard with the all-wheel drive, where the Pilot, you can have the option for a front-wheel drive or the all-wheel drive system. Now, what's cool about this one is it's going to have these cool silver 20-inch wheels, which looks really good against this black exterior. Now, you will notice a few different styling things with the Passport and the Pilot. The grille shape kind of looks the same, but it is a little bit different, and you do have those cool LED headlights with the daytime running lights up front, and it will have parking sensors front and rear. So that's going to go with your backup camera when you kick it into reverse it makes it a breeze to park. Now this one also does add the utility package so that's pretty cool you add the trailer hitch out back in case you're towing a small boat or utility trailer and you get the roof rack cross rails up above so if you want to put a mountain bike up there if you're going to the cabin for the weekend you can put all your stuff on the roof and keep a lot of space inside. Now let's talk about the biggest difference between the Pilot and the Passport and that's going to be the third row which is found in the Pilot. Now the Passport will fit five adults very comfortably in here and in the back this one does have the power lift gate and there's a huge amount of storage back there. I was very surprised in the difference between the Pilot and the Passport. It doesn't seem like much and really until you start digging in it is a little bit more room obviously in the Pilot but you get a ton of cargo space in here. And what's cool in the back there's these little buttons you can click and that's going to flip the seats down so you don't even have to walk around to the side you can just click those buttons and it's a 60 40 split so you can knock down one side or the other it makes it very easy for loading stuff up now even beyond that there's more storage underneath the floor so if you want to keep stuff out of sight or keep stuff with you all the time that's kind of a nice little storage area there now the EXL also will have the LED side indicators in the mirror here and a few other things we can check out on the inside. But before we do that, let's hop over to the Pilot. We'll check that one out. Now looking at the Pilot again, this is the EXL with the all-wheel drive. And the engine is going to be a little bit different. So this is a 3.5 liter V6, but it's paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission where you're going to get a 9-speed automatic transmission in the Passport. Fuel economy, they're both rated at 21 combined. When you think about the Pilot being a little bit larger, that's pretty good and kind of a leg up for this model. Now this one does ride on the 18 inch wheels and there is a bunch of different options if you're looking at maybe the Trail Sport, which is more of the off-road focused one, or the Elite, there's gonna be a ton of different options there as well as exterior colors. Same as the Passport, you're gonna have the parking sensors front and rear and that great backup camera as well as the power lift gate. So with the power lift gate open again, this is the third row SUV. So you've got that third row back there, but obviously you can fold those down flat as well. And like I said, you do get a ton of cargo space in this model. The second row, those seats are also hinged where they can kind of kick down and slide forward. There's a couple little buttons you can push which makes it easy for the third row to get out. Or when you're alongside the vehicle, you can just click that little button and it'll slide it forward. What's nice is that it's easy for the kids because it's low down, so you click that button, they can hop in the back, but actually the Pilot does have room for full-size adults to fit in that third row. Now there's a lot of second row amenities and other good stuff in these models, but let's hop back over to the Passport and we'll check out that interior. Okay, so behind the wheel of the Passport EXL, first things first, it does have keyless entry, but what's cool, it comes with a remote start from Honda. So you got the push button start in here, but you can fire it up, have the vehicle nice and warmed up in the winter time. As well, there is heated seats. So the driver and the passenger, you get three level heated seats in here, and these seats are extremely comfortable. So one other thing that's pretty cool, I've got my cell phone with me as we always do. You've got wireless charging down here or there is a couple of USB plugs, so you can plug your phone in, and this one is a wired Apple CarPlay system. So once I had my phone plugged in with my USB charger, I've got Google Maps, Spotify, I can use pretty much all my text messaging when I'm on the go. So with the Honda Safety Sensing System, which is called Honda Sensing, that's a lot of good stuff built into these vehicles. Blind spot monitoring, there's gonna be an adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, emergency braking. The Honda sensing system is awesome in terms of safety. And when you're pairing that with the Apple CarPlay, your attention is definitely on the road ahead and you're not messing with your phone at all when you're on the go. Now the Passport does have a digital display up here, just a couple buttons on the steering wheel, take you a couple minutes to get it figured out, and that's gonna show you all of your pertinent information in there. Simply kind of click through to see your trip computer, your all-wheel drive stuff. There's a few other things you can monitor in there, and you can kind of customize that to however you want to see that, so that's pretty cool there. 
A few other things on the infotainment screen here. You've also got your trip computer stuff there. Pretty much all your standard stuff that you'd expect to find. But I think most of the time the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is going to be pretty awesome. They've also left a volume knob here, which is very convenient as well. But these are kind of touchscreen buttons on the infotainment screen. Now below that you get the dual climate control and then we have our shift by wire system. So that does free up a huge amount of space for the cup holders. You've got this large center armrest here and then your little buttons you can just select for drive and then reverse. And then when you do put it in reverse, like I said, this one did have the parking sensors and a pretty good backup camera in the infotainment. Now one other thing, this one does get the sunroof up above with the EXL package, which isn't found in that pilot. But second row is pretty great. Like I said, you can fold those seats down. There was a lot of room back there. Headroom for me at six foot one where I was driving comfortably was not an issue. I had plenty of leg room. You can easily set four sets of golf clubs and put four adults in here and have a great afternoon out or go away for those long cabin weekend trips. I mean, this can give you a lot of usability and I like that nothing is overcomplicated in here. When I got in, I knew how everything worked. I knew where the buttons were and that's what's great about these Honda vehicles. But let's hop over to the Pilot, we'll check that one out. All right, so in the Pilot EXL, again, I've got my phone, so we've got wireless charging, but this time I've got wireless Apple CarPlay. So again, text messaging, Google Maps, all that good stuff is gonna be built in with the wireless setup for this model, which obviously is a little bit nicer, but you've still got USB plugs down here so you can keep everything charged up if you'd like to. Now from there, this one does get physical buttons on the infotainment screen, and there's not too much difference of the infotainment itself with the exception of cabin talk. So this is kind of like a PA speaker for inside the vehicle. Again, it kind of pairs nicely with that Honda Sensing safety setup where you can click cabin talk, you can speak forward, and your voice will be projected into the rear of the vehicle. So if the kids are misbehaving or you need to say something to someone, that is a pretty cool feature. So you're not looking away from the road. Now this one will also get the heated seats in here for the driver and the passenger. And as you work your way up to the trim levels, you can obviously add things like the ventilated or air conditioned seats or even heated seats for that second row. Now things are pretty similar. You still have your shift by wire system, just like the Passport. You can change through some of your drive modes here. So you can hear as I click through it, there's a handful of different modes, which would be like your snow or if you're towing anything, or if you need a little bit of off-road help, the system will help with the all-wheel drive to get that best possible bite and traction. Now, same cup holders here. You've got the large center console in the middle here. And on our steering wheel, you'll notice it's a little bit different. Not too much, but you've still got your home button and the left side is a full digital display here. So that will allow you to kind of scroll through again, all that same information, trip computers, some of the all wheel drive stuff, navigation, your phone that they wanted to keep on your hand. So you're not taking your hands off the steering wheel. There also is voice control in both of these. So if you click that voice control button on the infotainment, you can actually ask that system to do something for you. So again, it's all going back to safety. Now this one will get the paddle shifters because like I said, this does have the 10 speed automatic versus the nine speed in the Passport. So if you want to feel like getting a little sporty, you can definitely use the paddles on there. Both vehicles in the EXL trim also do come with memory seats. This one, when you get in, it will actually move the seat forward and back for ease of entry, which is great. But one thing I did notice getting in and out of the vehicle, I love the ride height on both of these. You don't really step up, you don't really sit down, you just kind of sit into the vehicle and these seats are extremely comfortable. The heated seats worked great. It was a little cool this morning, so I had those going. And then, I mean, overall, there's a lot of different interior choices, but I think the black interior, they always wear nicely in the pilots and I think it'll last a really long time. But let's focus on the second and third row. Now, what's pretty cool about that second row, the middle seat actually folds down so it almost feels like captain's chairs, but then that's removable. So you can take that middle section out and it stows underneath the floor in the back. So if you don't want the full passengers, but you want a little bit of a pass through in there, that's a pretty cool option to use. So it's either a seven passenger configuration that way, or you can stow it back up and have somebody sitting in the middle seat. Now they will get USB charging back there as well as the climate control for the third zone back there. And then in the third row, they also get USB-C charging. So everybody can keep their devices up when you're on the go or on a long road trip. A little bit different in the second row, you will also have a sunshade in the back. So you can pull those up, but the doors in both vehicles have a ton of storage. That's something that's great in here. There's lots of places to keep things, whether it's in the dash, in the back, in the doors. There's a lot of room to keep stuff kind of with you, which it seems like we've always got stuff when we're on the go. So that's a great feature out of both of these vehicles. 
So I know it's a lot of information. There's a lot of trim levels, whether you're looking for the sportiness of the trail sport or going off road, or you want a ton of equipment in the elite model or the touring. There's so much good stuff in these passport and pilot vehicles, and they are both pretty similar, but overall, Obviously, the biggest one is going to be the third row in this. You're going to have a little bit more storage space, a little bit more headroom and knee room as well in the second and third row. And the wireless Apple CarPlay I really like in this model as well. I think the seats are pretty much the same. The steering wheel and driving position feels very similar. I like the digital display a little bit more in the Pilot, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Passport because like I said, Honda makes it easy. You could throw the keys to anyone, have them remote started, hop in, they would be able to figure out how everything works and you could just take off and go very simply. So overall, if you're looking for the usability out of the eight passenger Honda Pilot or the five passenger Honda Passport, I think you gotta get out, take both of these Honda SUVs for a spin and see which one might just be perfect for you. So that was just a quick look at the differences between the Pilot and the Passport. Now, if you have any other questions or you'd like to schedule a test drive, you can visit us online at walzerhonda.com or stop by any one of our locations. We'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.